You are listening to Till the Bottom. For better or for worse, everything is fascinating if you dig deep enough. If you agree with this, then this podcast might be right for you. Let's start talking. Hello everyone, you are tuning in to Till the Bottom. We are your hosts, Mitra and Nacho, and this is the first time we have a, a guest with us. This time we have with us, a, a, I'm tempted to say Dr. Santiago Cañón, or is almost Dr. Santiago Cañón, very soon to be Dr. Santiago Cañón. Um, and we have prepared, a, I think, what it is, a very special episode for you. Um, but before introducing the topic of the, of the episode, let, let us start by introducing a little bit about what Santiago does for a living these days. Also, I want to highlight something that happened rather recently. That is, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to indulge here in a little bit of, of, of promotion of your work. <laughs> because you were very recently featured in, in Science Advances. Am I correct? Um, I just, I, I don't know, maybe you want to tell us a little bit what, what was uh, that you published in this, in this journal? Um, sure, yeah. So the, the whole story of this uh, paper was uh, to basically create a, a sort of magnetic skin that allows you to have a directional perception, basically, to be able to uh, manipulate or interact with uh, virtual objects, like in augmented reality or virtual reality scenarios. And yeah, yeah so I saw some videos featured in, in the internet about uh, so that you have this magnetic skin, kind of like almost mm -hmm. printed on your on the, top of, on the back of the palm of your hand, and okay. it senses movements and so on. Exactly. And, and, and right now you're currently thinking the applications are more towards uh, video game interfaces and stuff? Yes, that's how we sort of uh, motivated the, uh, this article. But uh, I think the, in the last days, actually, we have been approached by, by a, a very weird company, for example, <laughs> a company that is measuring the length of fish fishes in the, in the sea because they Apparently, use magnetic fields to met to determine the length of uh, fish in general. Oh, when they're moving, when they're, when they're swimming. Uh, no, well, they capture them, they measure them, and then they let them go. It's more for moni monitoring purposes. Yeah, oh, for distribution, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> something that not even in my wildest dreams I could have thought about that people would actually do that. <laughs> cool, cool. And then, um, so you're doing your PhD here in Dresden too, right? Yes, uh, well, not exactly in Dresden, it's Rosendorf, it's uh, in the outskirts of Dresden, but but this, the institute is called the Helmholtz Centrum Dresden Rosendorf. I All guess right. they put Dresden there so that people could find it on the map, at least. So, <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right, so I think we we start diving into what mm -hmm. the, the well, core of the matter is. kind of contextual because he is working basically in how, how are we interfacing it from reality to virtual reality. Yeah. It provides probably a nice bridge towards that. Definitely. What the main core of this episode is going to be. Um, but perhaps I believe that um, we, we have already released a couple of episodes and they are somehow very nicely connected to this one, I would, I would imagine. And just to fill you in like what we talked about, because probably it will be a little bit necessary that you kind of surf through these, these topics that we talked about previously quickly because I think it's, it's going to set the ground for, for this conversation. So what we talked about in the previous episodes, just, just very quickly, was about uh, how we came to sort of abandon a religious perspective of the world, not a religious perspective of the world, but more a more kind of esoteric approach to some of the things, mm -hmm. some, to reality that uh, we had as kids, and almost everyone, I would say, I don't know, 90-something percent of the population of the world are raised in such an environment. To adopt a more skeptical kind of uh, materialist, materialistic view of, the, of reality and of the world, and, uh, and so probably our listeners by now have a more, a more or less accurate idea of where we stand with respect to this. And now we are going to talk more more detail about uh, mm -hmm. some of the nuances because there's a lot to talk about this and many details that we still want to spell out. Uh, you, in your case. Uh, where do you stand now? Are you are you religious? Do you subscribe to any of the organized religions? Are you would you define yourself as spiritual or a skeptic? Uh, you don't believe in anything supernatural. How would you describe yourself? So before we start that, uh, we are trying to explore uh, 
skepticism in more detail? Yeah, well, I think the, the, the topic of this conversation that I believe it's, it's going to be a two-part conversation. The first part, we will try to establish our conceptions on the, on the, on the nature of reality. And from then, I think we want to move on, on once we have established our particular perspe individual perspectives of the world and what do we take to be real and what do we take to be not part of the, of the real world, how do you connect the concepts of, of, of minds into this perspective that you have? How do you marry the existence of minds and probably consciousness and so on, uh, this uh, classical metaphysical phenomena? How do they fit into, your, into the conception that you have of, of the world? And then later on, I think we want to do a little bit of speculation, uh, basically focusing on is there is there room for something else mm -hmm. other than the, the quote unquote material reality? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about these details. But first, I think we would like to know more, more or less roughly where you stand. So, I mean, uh, regarding uh, organized religions, then I, I am not subscribed to anything actually. Um, I would say I have a sort of cherry-picked things that I like from different uh, philosophers, if you want to, to call it like that. But uh, I, I, I don't believe I, I don't believe that I should believe things. Let's say. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it sounds a little bit weird, but I think it's much more important. I mean, if you want to have a sort of successful life, whatever you call successful in this world, you you cannot rely on just believing things. Because uh, believing is, is nice to as a, as a nice motivational um, background, it sort of keeps your more or less your whole world coherent. Mm -hmm. But if you want to really have results, if you want to really you know get something out of life, you have to not just believe, you have to know. And to mm -hmm. know, you have to experience, and to experience, you have to experiment with the world, and you have to really test and see what, 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 what works and what doesn't, and what is true and what is not true. And, uh, and that, uh, that, I would say, is my belief, uh, whether you can call it religion. Yeah, yeah. I think you, you were referring first to the, the word belief in a, in a religious context, right? Be believe, believing in the sense yeah. of, of trusting that something is true without sufficient evidence. Exactly, right? that's... Because otherwise, we are all motivated by beliefs and desires, as you would say. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, when I mean belief, I want to... It's a blind belief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a different, uh, different when I say, for example, I believe in myself, right? Mm -hmm. I, I believe that I will make it or whatever. This is a different, uh, if you would eliminate this belief, then uh, all your whole life falls apart, right? You need to have some yeah, kind yeah. Of, of belief, <laughs> yeah. but not blind belief, yeah. right? Blind beliefs are very dangerous mm -hmm. because then you, you just can't be just believe a whole story and you go going, you keep going, going in a certain direction. And then when you wake up, you're in the middle of, uh, and, you know, madness. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. can go very deep down the rabbit hole if you if you rely solely on faith-based belief and, and use that mm -hmm. as a kind of... But an absolute anarchist uh, school of thought can also be uh, quite... You mean like a nihilistic? A nihilistic, like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can also be quite hardcore. Uh, yeah, actually I was uh, I was having a similar conversation with a friend of mine who is a philosopher and he lives in Berlin. And he was telling me that because... Mm -hmm. He also told me, like, you know, the, don't don't become a, a nihil, a nihilist. Mm -hmm. it, can, it can be also quite quite uh, tricky, right? Quite uh, difficult. So you have to keep sort of um, yeah, yeah. balanced. Mm -hmm. Because subconsciously, uh, I guess it's almost impossible to be a, a nihilist because we are predisposed and uh, hardwired in some ways as to human care about things. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Some things matter, and and that that there are roots of beliefs on why certain things matter, yeah. which we have somehow imbibed uh, subconsciously. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think pro probably my view of nihilism is not sophisticated at all. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't really cared much to find out exactly about the nuances mm -hmm. in the philosophy or not. But roughly speaking, mm -hmm. as I understand it, it's uh, uh, not, not, just to put it in, in plain terms, not to really care about anything that... Uh, or not, not having a, a overarching narrative that directs your life in any which way. There is a, okay, but I don't think none of us it's, yeah. it's, uh, would describe himself as a, as a nihilist. So it's a bit too extreme. It's, it's a bit yeah. too. It's too far, too far away. 
Um, okay. Uh, well, now to drag it back. Yeah, but uh, so if you don't believe in anything, uh, mm-hmm. do you uh, believe in some sort of a reality? Of course, again, I use the word be- belief, right? Yeah, well, actually, I, as I told you, I believe in uh, what I mean for me, it's uh, what, what's real is what I can really know. Mm. And what I can know is what I can really experience. I, w- I would, if you, if you would use a very ancient, not mm. ancient, but old terminology, you could tell that I am a, like an empir- empirical mm. person. Mm. I like to, you know, <clears throat> I, I don't like uh, to mm. just believe things yeah. because you told me, but I would, or because even someone, mm. I, I, like lately I don't even believe if someone uh, publishes uh, an article because nowadays yeah. a lot of people are also No, but because this is the overreaches of the, we are, we are brimming towards finding out facts. With mm-hmm. articles, I think it's about skepticism. Yeah. But, but sometimes, even in, in this uh, at this level, sometimes it happens mm-hmm. that you know, like people do things and then you repeat it. Mm-hmm. And something yeah. was not like that, you know. So you just go, you get your hands dirty, and you figure out, ah, okay, it's like this. No, yeah, it's very good to have a, to maintain a, a healthy skepticism, mm-hmm. especially when when and we are in the business that uh, we are, which is a, a scientific endeavor. It's sense. definitely. It's, a, it's, it's definitely healthy. It's, it's not only healthy, it's uh, absolutely recommendable to, to, to kind of be a skeptic uh, suspicious of things. It's not not uh, absolutely suspicious. Mm. Um, absolutely suspicious of everything because you're not going to build science and you all by yourself, right? You, you, need, you need to stand on the shoulders of other of people. Mm. You know, it's, it's a collective mm. thing and you cannot just distrust. Throw everything. Yeah. Out. Yeah. So it's no, but, so but that, that's his point, right? Mm. Of course, one article can be skeptical about, but if there are different approaches coming to the same narrative, yeah. there's more and more a percentage of truth that you will give to that, uh, to being a piece of fact. In the mm. end, the uh, more data you collect, you collect uh, mm. high, the higher the chance yeah. that it's real, right? That and and that's that's the the fundamental basis of science. Right? Like it's an institution uh, where all the human biases biases over a period of time uh, kind of comes up, right? Because there's more and more people trying to uh, figure it out from different ways. Yeah, but it's, 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 it has filters. There are filters mm. built within the scientific enterprise. Precisely because, uh, as, you, as you said, you, you, collective human biases, yeah. if you let them, if you leave them unchecked, they will, you will stray too far away from what the purpose of science is, which is to discover how they uh, world actually functions. So you need to keep this have this filter that sort of puts things back in, into place uh, when, when they stray too, too far away. But anyway, just uh, to, to bring the conversation yeah. back to kind of the top. You, you said a word there that uh, when you were describing your, your position, you said that you would more or less, uh, roughly speaking, qualify or describe yourself as an empiric- empiricist. And just really to spell out a little bit of what that means, and you might correct me, if I'm wrong, if I'm capturing your, your position wrong, but it's essentially the idea that everything that forms part of the contents of your mind was first out there. That every, every it's in, in Hume's, in, in Hume's terms that uh, every idea comes from an impression. An, imp- an impression is an experience of the, of the outside world. There's, there's such a thing as an objective reality out there, outside the confines of your mind, and every idea that you have in your mind first, or it, 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 uh, it was originated from a perception that you had from an interaction with something out there in the real, in the real world. Yeah. It's more or less. Uh, that, that's, that's true, but I would not completely ascribe, ascribe myself to this uh, classical definition. That, but that's, that's correct. That's the, the, it's like the starting point. Mm-hmm. That, that is indeed the correct definition of what really em- empirism is, is whatever. Um, but, but the problem with that definition also is, uh, I, mean, I mean, I don't like to uh, sort of to put people or, or to put myself into a drawer because I think this definition is also very limiting, especially as it was originally conceived. Um, and also it has some flaws, right? That's every, like, uh, every almost every philosophical uh, movement in the in history had always had uh, a counter movement, right? So then the the, the em- empirist then uh, had like uh, or like in, I don't know in art just to put it simpler like impressionist you had on one side and expressionist 
then uh, I don't know, Nadaist or whatever, Dadaist, whatever crap. Mm -hmm. So, in the, the, yeah, the, the, well, probably the, the little difference is that uh, in science or in probably the, the, the case in philosophy is not as, uh, as clear as the case of, as of, of science, but uh, new movements try to overthrow in a way old, old movements. And in art and design, there is uh, friction and there is a sense of uh, progress, there is a sense of, uh, of, of uh, kind of a progressive march of the arts moving towards, in, uh, particularly in, in art history, towards more abstract, more symbolistic, symbol art mm -hmm. that is more, much more loaded with symbolism and so on. But, uh, but the older disciplines or the older styles uh, still practice, they are not in vogue anymore, but uh, that does not uh, disqualify them as, as put them outside the category of art or something like that. And, and in science, it's kind of different, right? In science, uh, new scientific currents try to supersede all, sci all scientific currents and disqualify them and, and put them outside the we lane of what... Uh, Science. Which I think is actually pretty dangerous in some in some in some cases because you might actually neglect some really nice and it actually happens sometimes you know like I think sometimes science rediscovers itself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not all the time of course there were some uh, views of the world that were uh, practically wrong right they were wrong proved to be wrong but many times there were really nice ideas in the past mm -hmm. that uh, probably. Uh, someone considered at some point that's not important anymore and then they were like sort of put in a drawer and, and forgotten and then people after 60 years or whatever come back and realize mm -hmm. oh shit this like, 60 years is a small time scale mm -hmm. yeah. but but there must be a lot of things that uh, were talked about and discussed about uh, like 2000 years back i mean it's have come back. Have been repackaged so yeah, yeah. Re yeah. Mm -hmm. anyway now something else um i mentioned that one of the, the, the cornerstones or the foundational principles of, of the, the empiricist tradition is that you start from the fact that there's an external objective material reality out there and that uh, that, is, that, that is a given. Uh, do you doubt that that's true or...? Uh, no, I, I do not doubt it because I mean because, you can perceive you can... it with your, with your senses, right? I think that's the whole also point of this uh, uh, of empirism. Mm -hmm. so not even the slightest element of doubt that uh, like of course like we are we were all watch Matrix and then all of a sudden it's like oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you, you can, you can, you can adopt and it has been the case through in the history of philosophy of uh, you can have a position in which you fundamentally doubt the existence of objective reality from the get go. Mm -hmm. So you, you, it's a, it's a, the, the most uh, radical strands of, of skepticism, you know, from ancient, ancient Greece, where they question the very idea of, not, not necessarily of objective reality, but of the possibility to get to know anything about uh, this, this uh, objective reality. So it's like a doubt on steroids or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, do you abide by that? Do you? No, I don't. I don't. I, don't. I, I think it's a little bit. And that um, is what you would call solipsism. That's no. solipsism can come from there. Your solipsism can uh, is I think is the most extreme case of, of fundamental. I don't know like skept skepticism where where you assume that everything that happens around you is a fiction that is created by. The, whatever is happening in, in, in your mind, even the existence mm -hmm. of somebody else's mm -hmm. mind, it's it falls into the same category. It's kind of the modern version of that is this simulation uh, argument. Yeah. Uh, have you heard about it? That it's all that we're running is this is a mm -hmm. run simulation. Is, no, no, but in the no. principal essence is that uh, the only thing that I am certain to certain of completely is that uh, what's happening in here is reality. We cannot be sure about anything else. Like, but well, inside where, like inside your mind. <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just want you mean you mean inside yeah. your brain or like uh, this or, uh, or inside you? Like yeah. this is so. So what, right whatever you're perceiving, you as in you mm -hmm. are perceiving. That is the only thing you can be absolutely sure of. Yes, I, that's kind of the, the 
Yes. I, Descartes kind of thing. Oh, yeah, I they, think, uh, therefore I am. That's yeah. what I said. I mean, uh, what, I, what I'm pretty sure is that if I, if I jump uh, from the second floor, <laughs> I will most probably die. I mean, that, that's And I that's think clear. we agree with that perception, so it <laughs> yeah, would yeah, really yeah. stop you. But I think this, this glass looks pretty safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, if we break this glass, we're going to get cut. And all these kind of things you learn from experience, right? So You know what bothers me a little bit is uh, that... Despite the fact that I am, uh, I, I'm very firmly on the side of, of objective reality. It's that it's a reality. It's a real thing. That people that argue the opposite, people that argue that it's all a fiction, in this that uh, fall into this solipsistic tradition, or people that argue in favor of the simulation argument, maybe uh, talk a little mm -hmm. bit about what that is. Is there's essentially no no. No argument, really, that you can provide to disprove their view. I mean, I haven't come up with anything, and and that is a little bit uh, annoying. It it has it it's like a thorn in my side. That uh, uh, let, let me just run quickly through the simulation argument because I think yeah. it's very, it's it's very illustrative, and uh, it comes from this. Uh, it's a British. I think he's a physicist, a philosopher. He's first and foremost a physicist. And does a, Okay, he's very much into artificial intelligence and so on. His name is Nick Bostrom. He works in mm -hmm. Oxford. And he put forward this idea that you, need, you only need to grant very simple premises for the simulation argument to become plausible, which is you have a civilization anywhere in this universe which does not destroy itself and it reaches the capability of building computers powerful enough so as to simulate things like us with all the details and all the nuances and all the, have the capacity to have subjective experiences and interact with other beings that also seem to have subjective experiences. And, so, and, and this universe has the laws of physics as we know them and, and so on. And that, that simulation could have been running since the one second ago and all these memories and yeah. all this history that we think we have and, and the history of the world and so on, it's programmed already from the industry. So, and we could be a school project of some, <laughs> <laughs> some uh, super know, intelligent yeah. alien or, or something. Like, but I think it black, sounds uh, it sounds so. I, I think Black Mirror gets us in tune with these kind of things. Right? Uh, you yeah, watch yeah, yeah, I will yeah. only watch one episode ah, okay. first because there they get this idea rerunning in a lot of yeah. this theme rerunning in a lot of yeah. This I mean to be great. This uh, I I think this argument is a little bit older than Black Mirror, but I, I yeah, get sure. It. But no, no, but, but what I'm saying is oh. it's gained some traction. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it makes for a lot of good science yeah. fiction. No, but so. but but here's the thing. Here's the, the, the thorn, the, the <laughs> thing that burns me from the inside is that I've never come across. An argument to refute that, even though it sounds ridiculous, right? Uh, to my ear, it sounds preposterous. It sounds like a made-up argument cooked in a moment of. of it, 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 it sounds like philosophy running amok <laughs> without control and, yeah, yeah. and positing these po these possibilities. Mm -hmm. But no, but but that's the thing. It's such a fascinating argument, and that's why it sticks with you. But it's it's one of like a preposterous amount of uh, different possibilities, right? You know, and I've, I've heard professors, I've, I've been listening to no, I don't know why this is such a big deal. It's just a, a single hypothesis in the middle of so many others. But it captures it, the imagination of so many yes. people, right? There's a, I, I've heard this from professors of philosophy that when they kind of give this, this sort of, of fundamental doubts about the nature of reality and the philosophy that have mm. nurtured that kind of ideas. The students get fascinated by that kind of stuff. Mm. And, and I, I'm afraid that we lose some probably brilliant minds in that, in, in, in that kind of Where current. Is it? It's just like contemplating about multiple universes and stuff. <laughs> like, like some things, you, you can just build on things which we are absolutely not sure of. Well, why? I mean, I, I, I find it actually uh, cute. And it's a nice, it's a nice uh, thing to do, but but uh, you know, I, I with time I have become more of a um, more pragmatic. You know, I, mean, mm -hmm. I tend to be more pragmatic, and where where entertaining these ideas is, is, is nice, and it can lead you to write nice science fiction books and all the things. 
I, I still think that if you want to keep moving forward and you want to do something, you have to concentrate on what you can control and what you can define, which is basically mm -hmm. here, right? Mm -hmm. And this is a very nice, nice um, question. And of course, finding an, a counter argument is very hard because because if the simulation it's uh, reaches the level that you you tell, uh, well, there's you can move there's the, nothing that we could not be. You can just move the goalpost to so whatever you want at any mm -hmm. moment. At every counter argument, you can say, well, that was also programming the simulation. Mm -hmm. There, uh, it's it's a, it's a never ending game. I mean, there's no way out. That yeah. it, it, it well to, to my kind of. of, of there was this book I was reading where uh, the, the, the super intelligent AI gets uh, consciousness and uh, the only way you could uh, tell it to stop is, you know, you might just be a simulation. So the role is useful for the super some. computer had doubts after that, so apparently there is no solution to this. <laughs> and it just keeps on computing about thinking about arguments and if a super intelligent computer cannot find a counter argument then probably there's no counter argument yeah. after all that. <laughs> Our intuitions are correct, sadly. So I'm basically I'm, I'm gonna live with this thought until the last uh, of, of my days. <laughs> um. But, but it's, anyway, exciting. It's, it's exciting to just uh, keep on... It's uh, entertaining to yeah, think yeah. about that. It's just uh, don't, don't really think. I mean it doesn't affect in any way as you say you, from a more pragma pragmatic uh, kind of standpoint. It doesn't really affect the way you, you mm. carry yourself anyway. Mm. You know, you're gonna keep on living the same way you do, even if if, if, it's a simulation. if every every now and then you think, oh, maybe I'm a, maybe I'm a simulation. Oh, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Feels quite good. For you. I mean, it's, <laughs> ah, quite, it's quite real. It's very well done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah, maybe uh, let's just continue with. Uh, so just 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 let's. Uh, Basically, you know, before moving forward, yeah. anything else. So, materialist, not materialist, realist, materialist. Is there something else? Uh, yeah. um, Actually, it's an right. important thing to just point out. When you say materialist, mm -hmm. what do you mean by that? Because that yeah, word yeah. means something completely different. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because the, the, in 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 some circles, like in a colloquial sense, yeah. it, it probably most people. Say oh, what comes to mind when you think of that means like oh, you mean that everything is made out of matter and, and, and stuff and and, mm -hmm. and okay there are maybe fields you know and there are forces and but other than that there's just no actually I, actually the, the term or the idea of materialism is more like a like a how how to call it an exclusionary idea mm -hmm. it it excludes the possibility of for instance something supernatural and esoteric mm -hmm. that doesn't play by yeah. the rules. Of the of the let's say the physical laws of this universe. So, so I think when it was defined the first time, this who was it? I don't know. It was some someone in the seventeenth century who talked about everything that exists is matter, and uh, we're just talking about forces uh, how they are interplaying with it. Yeah, I think well, I don't know exactly what it was, but mm -hmm. it's certainly not. It's not a classical no, no notion of. of uh, well, there were there were the mo the mo there were some Greeks that were already kind of into that. Yeah. The yeah. 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 Some Indians but there were yeah, but there were also you know the other the the, the, the Pythagoreans yeah. and the Platonic the, yeah. the disciples of Plato. Yeah. Right? So, I discovered the agnostic schools of Hinduism, who were thinking about these things back in five thousand BC and stuff. So. Oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, sure. and, and and you know I just read through the things they say and it all makes sense uh, <laughs> to me <laughs> as a materialist. <laughs> so you consider yourself a ma okay? Maybe I, I have to tell first if I am a materialist sure. or not. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you can tell tell, tell, tell your, your your view and then probably I don't know you want to, to give some details about your particular flavor of yeah. and mine. You can do it. So let's. I, I I will tell what I believe. I believe that this is again a belief, right? So I thought you said you don't believe. <laughs> this is a, again, and I, that's why I make a disclaimer. You know, this is a belief, right? Mm -hmm. um, because in this case, belief with lowercase b, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, not the capital. My belief is that um, there there is a set of rules that governs the universe. At least what we consider universe mm -hmm. for us, if it's a simulation or not, I will not discuss that. But in our universe, I think this set of rules 
uh, control basically everything that happens around us. And it is, this should be uh, very clear. But what my belief is, is that so far we don't have the whole, the full book. So because we don't have the full book of rules, we only are looking at a, a limited spectrum. And then we might see things that in appearance are supernatural, but that just means that we, that these things are happening within a, a, another part of this book that we have not access to yet. That means we, we still don't know some other rules mm -hmm. that uh, would, let's say, enrich this lab, this book, this uh, rule yeah. book. Yeah. This is my, my This is your Bible. <laughs> this book here, not know is the Bible. <laughs> the, yeah. cosmic, the true cosmic Bible. Yeah. No, but yeah. what I'm listening is something akin to saying uh, science, the business of science is not, it's not over yet. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Something like um, there's more from well not probably there there has to be more physics out sure, there you sure. know, that is just yet not not yet discovered but that once imagining that we reach the point the point in which uh, even we don't even have to get to know all these rules the point is that nothing plays outside mm -hmm. those rules exactly once once you would get to know in principle this this uh, let's call it this huge book or this like rule book mm -hmm. if if there exists such mm -hmm. a thing. It can be that this book is infinite by definition, so you can just keep pu pu pouring oh, new things, you know, like. And, and do you believe that these set of rules, uh, what if one of the rules is these set of rules depends on which part of the universe you are in or that, that, that is There that are that many thing. books with m many different sets of rules that uh, govern diff well, different things. Because there are proposals think, of that as well. I think your role is there. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. It on the on the vein of the multiverse or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I'm not too much a uh, fan of these multiverse yeah. ideas, but but what I do believe is that this this usually this what I think is this book should be simple enough, yet all all these rules combine themselves to to create really complex uh, mm -hmm. behavior. Right. So it's like. All these uh, like laws of physics that we know, they are usually governing like you know attraction, repulsion, mm -hmm. interactions, and they are like I don't know uh, describing motion of things. All of these things interplay to to, to create like what we know as the universe, mm -hmm. right? So even if you, but but the, but it's not completely yeah, that, that is that is an accepted. Mm -hmm. It's not only an accepted notion; it's kind of I would say uh, to to a large degree uh, proven to be correct, right? So you have the law, you have. If you kind of build a hierarchy mm -hmm. of the sciences, you have at the bottom. Okay, mathematics. We're going to put it aside. I think it's not really a science. So you have mathematics. Sorry, you have physics, and you you with the physical elements start to interact with one another. They kind of you, you enter to the territory of, of chemistry. You know, all these all these borders are basically yeah. artificial, are very yeah. porous between mm -hmm. one another. But the point is that you rise in complexity. Then comes biology, and then ecology, and so on. And even though the, the rules might be simple, when they when you have many different bodies or many different, uh, yeah, elements interacting based on these very simple principles, they produce very complicated. Mm -hmm. exactly. But but you're going in domains. Uh, I think uh, there's another way of looking at it. Like I think um, as a rationalist who has uh, gone through history of science, uh, what you said uh, makes a lot of sense. Like uh, if you think about the Newtonian world. Mm -hmm. uh, we understood reality in some ways, like we could predict how things are moving around in the celestial space. Um, and we had a certain notion of reality and a certain set of rules. Mm -hmm. Only that. later we realized that these rules break down completely in a different uh, domain. So, yeah. so, so it, it, it gathered a new flavor. And now in this new flavorful argument, uh, we have a richer understanding. Universe. Yeah, sort of like the rules are scale dependent. Well, so, so I, I guess that's what. Uh, yes, that's. And, and you you would assume that uh, this set of nuances that we have uh, with our understanding of these rules gets deeper and deeper. Yes, but but uh, you know the, the problem with this is that uh, I think we we we're not yet quite there to really figure out the whole mm. thing because otherwise. Maybe it would get bored, mm -hmm. boring, as I, as I was discussing with my philosopher mm -hmm. friend. Uh, but whatever, I, mean, I just want to give a simple example. Sometimes rules may, may, uh, might appear to be rules, but if you look closer, maybe they are not rules. Like, yes. for example, 
uh, thermodynamics. As, as a biologist, uh, there's always an exception to the rule. Like that's what we always learn. Okay, this is how it almost always happens. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, and you for example, the thermodynamics. Yeah, like the second law of uh, thermodynamics, right? Or likewise, entropy, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, may maybe you're familiar with this uh, Maxwell Demon uh, thought experiment. Like sorting out all the yeah. people have. So exactly. So, can you elaborate on it? So, what? So, basically, what Maxwell thought is like, okay, you know, entropy always tells you that, let's say, <clears throat> to make it. Simple, everything tends to be disordered, or anything, everything pl uh, like flows in a particular direction. Like, like it's sort of also connected with the arrow of time. Like everything, you, you never see a, a, a glass spontaneously reassembling from the ground and becoming a full glass. It always the move is happening in one direction, mm -hmm. and in the same same way in thermodynamics, usually, let's say if you have a, a warm container and you have a cold container, then the, the warm gas will tend to fall to flow to the cold gas container. But Unless the molecules of the gas are interacting with each other. Yeah, so the setup is that you have a box, you have a porous wall, exactly. right? Or, or even a wall it, it's with, a, just a hole. A wall. It, yeah, with a hole. With a shutter. You Imagine you have a small shutter. On the one side you have a, mm. a hot gas, and the other side you have a cold gas. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you let the hot, the hot gas then flow, and then in principle you reach like thermal equilibrium. But what, <coughs> what Maxwell thought is like, maybe, what I can do is I can open this shutter like fast enough so that I can for for a second or for a split of, of time catch a, a molecule that is actually because this is all happening randomly right this is mm -hmm. a statistical phenomenon maybe a, a molecule of the cold gas jumps it back into the uh, hot yeah, so container and then I, I close the shutter mm -hmm. and then at that point I would be violating entropy by definition mm -hmm. and this is actually a, a very interesting example because you can think of uh, entropy as a, as a let's say a macro rule. So in the in, like in the real world, in the world world around us, it is a rule. Mm -hmm. But in the microscopical world, or nanoscopical, in, in, in the, the astro like like, like the, the fact that there are celestial bodies is quantum fluctuations in an entropic in the expanding universe. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, it, but it's the same kind of thing, yeah. What I meant is that even Maxwell, I think that this is a quote by, by Maxwell. He said literally that that this this law, the, the laws of thermodynamics are basically a statistical yeah. laws. Yeah, it's an ensemble law. But mm. if you go to the to the particle, single particle level, particles are actually mm. violating entropy all the time. Mm. Uh, yeah, but but they they violate the principle first of all, first of all, locally. Locally. And uh, and in a non-stable manner. So if you let the system run long enough, they will tend to 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 move. Let's say the whole system will tend to move towards the direction of increasing entropy. So this 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 it's just that, as you said, entropy is a it's a it's a concept in, in thermodynamics, which is a, stati a statistical concept, and it applies to to macro systems. In the, at the macro level, you can have these little tiny temporary violations. Mm -hmm. uh, towards the increasing of entropy. Uh, anyway, but that was what you, you brought the example as a for example to say that basically that might mean that we we know the one part of the book we don't know the whole book right it's like mm -hmm. we are missing another chapter or we are missing mm -hmm. some lines that allows us to connect why this is scaling differently like in, in maybe in one uh, let's say length scale. Mm -hmm. It behaves in one way, but then when we scale it up to a different mm -hmm. uh, length scale, then it beho beho behaves differently. So, mm -hmm. I don't yeah, know. I would subscribe to that. I mean, I mean, it, it, again, it, what I gather from what you're saying is that uh, science and, and knowledge is an ongoing process, and we don't know everything yet. We don't know the rules. There, there are more. There, surely, there are more rules. There are possibly completely new laws that govern mm -hmm. phenomena that we. Probably don't even yet have uh, direct evidence of. And, mm -hmm. So it's it's yeah, but it, but still it's uh, it falls within what I would still consider a materialist approach in a sense. So then, I mean, then and extend, under this yeah. definition, then I am. <laughs> yeah. So there's no yeah. in your worldview there's no space for what people usually would refer to as a, a supernatural. Kind of phenomenology. Mm -hmm. Well, again, as I told, like what we call supernatural might be simply things that are not. Just things uh, that we don't know. 
Mm. But yeah, okay. You know so how to explain. You know, how you can know, I put it? Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. I get, I get that. But I, I'm afraid that to the ears of some uh, part of the audience, that might come as a, for instance, uh, kind of God of the gaps argument. That there's a, there are gaps mm -hmm. of things that we don't know, and maybe it turns out that. In, in one of those gaps, you can fit the notion of a god, and this god probably follows some certain rules that we just don't know yet. I mean, I don't think you're considering that kind of possibility. I mean, you, you have, let's say that the, the space or the range of the phenomena that these not yet known rules are able to explain does not really consider the possibility of, of a god-like uh, creature, does it? No, I don't. Uh, I, I don't so, so there are limits, right? I mean, there's I don't a... subscribe to the idea of a, of a godlike creature, as in like. It's funny yeah. how you say God and I see a man standing somewhere. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is um, not the case, especially if you want to consider someone that I mean, someone that would have created the whole universe. Mm -hmm. is, uh, by itself, is somehow ridiculous mm -hmm. uh, by itself, but. Yeah, I'm just trying to I, I'm just trying to, to say this because precisely because that's that's not what you're I think you're saying. I don't think you're saying something like uh, just just to, for for purposes of purposes of clarification for somebody that might be listening and thinking ah okay so in his worldview maybe there's still space for some uh, creature somewhere or something like a theistic kind of god at the very least that has has some rules that we just haven't discovered yet and, and, and behaves in a certain way that are knowable is knowable in principle but it just so happens that we haven't reached that. Let, let me just explain what I mean by supernatural with a very simple mm -hmm. example. Imagine that uh, <clears throat> let's say we advance so much that we have uh, and this is again stupid but imagine that we have a, a, a time machine now mm -hmm. here and I would I would go with my with my uh, smartphone and I would I go think back to the. Know where you're going. I don't know. Twelfth century. Was it Asimov or who said that? that every any, any technology advanced enough might look to you as magic. Or yeah, something supernatural. Like yes. So. so I would go back and then I would like you know with this device I can call someone that is in the other side of the ocean, right? They would say like, "Fuck, this guy is magical, right?" Or or I have a, I go with a with a you know like a AK forty seven and I start killing people, you know. Like, Mm -hmm. And I just think this was the first time in this podcast that the word fuck comes out. I just wanted to... I'm sorry. No, it's good. <laughs> it's so good. You already made history. <laughs> you were the first. Good. Okay. Do you have a counter? Something? I, I, think, I think only the first time counter. Yeah, the other one, you know, now, now they're like, no, everything the, is no. the dumb is broken. I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay. <laughs> Uh, good, uh, making history. <laughs> uh, okay, I get it. I, but I get this it. is what I mean by supernatural. No, not that uh, the Virgin Mary will appear in the middle of the room. Yeah, something. yeah, yeah. So there, there's a, there's a limit. Maybe it's, maybe it's, it's quite hard to, 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 to draw the line of yeah. I do expect that there are some laws that we don't know yet. But they are not going to be this X kind of laws, mm -hmm. right? And they are not going to be the kind of laws that allow for for virgin birth in the mm -hmm. in the in the middle of, of the of the desert. Yeah, or uh, what I believe is these the things that are qualified as supernatural still have to uh, subscribe themselves to the set of rules that governs the governs the universe, right? So you cannot think of I don't know. I cannot no, even think then, about. Then, then of course, you can make up a lot of arbitrary rules. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Then. I, I'm just trying to like play with the bond, where, where the bond boundaries are. You know, again, it's just. Mm -hmm. I, I think. I mean, I would just keep on repackaging the same notion. That, yeah, I think we all agree. The, the 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 business of physics is not over yet. There there are things to discover. There are things to polish and so on. But you don't expect that. In 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 that yet unknown group or set of rules that are there waiting for, for our discovery, you'll find something like... So, uh, that, that's an interesting thing that you just raised immediately, right? You said the business of physics is not over yet. Yeah. It's, it's so, so that's a good place to start. Uh, do you think, uh, because uh, we, we come up with a lot of arbitrary, uh, very, very ridiculously crazy sounding notions on 
say you see a certain set of phenomena, but mathematically, maybe that's a hypothesis of this. And that's where, you know, physicists say that it's a realm of theirs to uh, take, yeah, yeah, I, can I, explain. But uh, do you think there's certain things that mathematically we cannot formulate rules for? Uh, mm, so, 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 so something in the in the universe and in the phenomena the phenomena contained within the universe that is not explainable or writable in the language of mathematics. Mm. Because in principle, uh, that's that's how I see how we define what comes from the what we call spiritual garbage in with respect to some of the, 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 the hypotheses that people come up uh, from the scientific world. Like I think that the fundamental be, difference is a mathematical formulation. That might be a belief with lowercase b that I might subscribe to. That, that such a thing doesn't exist. There's this uh, essay, I don't know if you know it, it's, it's well, it was written by Eugene Wigner, one of the, the the, the parents of the creators of, of, mm. of, of quantum mechanics, particularly the, mathem the heavy mathematical part of it. Uh, it's called The Unreasonable, uh, I don't remember exactly the name, but it's, it talks about the unreasonable accuracy of a power of mathematics to describe the, 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 loss, the loss of physics. That why is that the case? Why is it the case that we can have mathematical expressions to encode the laws of physics and that they work so well. So it's kind of in the spirit of, mm. of what you're saying. And I think so. And I, it's my, again, belief with, with uh, lowercase no. b, <laughs> that I don't expect, I don't expect, I wouldn't even, I cannot even start to imagine mm. how would you discover something, some law that is not expressible in the language of mathematics. How mm. would that look like? I, 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 so so let let's let let's bring uh, like maybe uh, uh, let's bring mind into the table. Huh? Let's bring mind the phenomenon. No, no, we get mind. there. We get get to mind get, uh, get to a bit later. Promise. <laughs> I guess. <so. laughs> At some point. <laughs> <laughs> what, where do we go? No, let's just come up with uh, random. Uh, I, I don't know if you if it's like. Uh, a lot of uh, physicists do ridicule the idea of a multiverse, but they don't rule it out, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so, um, like uh, you come up with this, uh, I, I don't know, there's this double slit experiment mm -hmm. where you have uh, two uh, uh, chambers and when you're flashing in electrons from there, they don't really, uh, they seem to interact with each other and... Uh, you have two holes, right? Yeah, uh, the double slit experiment. Mm -hmm. And then the idea is that there's this, uh, if you have one electron at a time going in, uh, you still see that set of patterns. So you, have, you have a screen, you have a screen. It depends you have on the observator, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, sure. Observer, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's the most detail of it. And uh, one very reasonable explanation of this be if, if the universe is splitting into a lot of different dimensions, uh, you have the electron in another dimension, uh, uh, another universe, which is interacting with it. And you can scale this logic up, and this has been scaled. Oh, wait, I'm a little bit confused. I think, uh, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. I think what you're getting into is the, the many worlds interpretation. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So, yeah. So that has to do the, with the fact that, so for a, for a quantum mechanical system, a subatomic particle, it's described by the Schrodinger equation or a wave equation, mm. and that. That wave equation is is uh, inherently statistical. It's, it gives you probabilities, right? You you get the module of the so, so that does, yeah. yeah, but just to get there, just quickly, uh, it's it's it, it tells you a probability distribution of if you decide to measure the position of electron at at any given time. What you can know from the equation is there's a ninety something percent probability that it's going to be here. There's a three percent probability. It's like a cloud of yeah. probability. Uh, but when you measure the thing. No. It's gonna be somewhere, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's gonna. It's, it's. You're not gonna measure. Mm -hmm. Ah, I measure ninety-seven percent of the electron, and the other three percent is somewhere else. No, so you call it's called the collapse of the wave mm -hmm. of the wave function, and that determines the reality of the electron, real mm -hmm. position of the of yeah. the electron. And I think what you're getting into is that what happened to these other possibilities, you know, these other. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
No, no, and most of the time, yeah, yeah, the, the argument is argument we is that just they, don't have a feeling for it. So the argument is that they all occur, mm. but in different worlds, you said. Yeah, no, all no, that, that could be a very uh, far fetched re reality, uh, but it's not ruled out and it's not uh, called garbage by the scientific. Uh, but wait a second, what you were implying with that is that this electron would jump into another universe and then jump back into our universe or. Uh, well, well, I, I guess that's also part of uh, the principle that you have. Uh, no, but you, that, I think, well, okay, again, mm. I'm sorry, sorry to intervene again, but uh, I just, I just kind of want to mm. phrase this in the, in, in the form of a question to, mm. to answer. So, um, and to connect that with the topic, which is, uh, there was a nature of reality. So, when the wave function collapses, mm -hmm. That, in a way, and I hear, we just lack the language to talk about this properly, but I'm just gonna go with the colloquial kind of language. Uh, in a way, that determines what's real, the reality of that subatomic particle and how, in the context of our universe and our, re our, our real mm -hmm. world. Uh, and there's, you have this possibility, this other interpretation of quantum mechanics, which says that the other possibilities did occur, just not in this mm. reality, yeah, yeah. in some other yeah, material yeah. reality. And how does that fundamentally affect exactly. our notion, yeah. our conception mm. of, of reality? Do you, does it alter your, your worldview in any significant way? Is there something there that uh, doesn't conform to your, to, your preconception, to your understanding of uh, mm. how the universe works? I mean, this but, is really, you know, this is, the debate is not over. Yeah, uh, this you know? is an interpretation. The, the, Copenhagen, yeah, the, the Copenhagen, uh, Copenhagen interpretation of, of, of quantum mechanics is, it has the co consensus, but it's not, it's not the last word. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's still debate, there's still, there's still mm -hmm. books being published about other possibilities. There's still people that are kind of fighting in the name of Einstein, <laughs> the Einsteinian tradition fighting this. Mm -hmm. and that he, 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 he never was he was never content with this. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. The way th things turned out, to, you know, the consensus mm -hmm. where where it landed. So 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 just just uh, so, 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 so the way I was trying to pose this question is, uh, suppose uh, you tell a person, uh, sub call it a psychic, right, who, who is uh, like doing telekinesis with somebody in the other part of the world, yeah, and he he convince he tries to convince us that yeah, you know, uh, and. Um, if electrons can be into no, 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 I'm not talking about that. Too. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not even going into the fundamental details of it. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, we will just ridicule the shit out of such a notion, right? Because it's not grounded in anything. Uh, yeah, that we know of, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. as we know it. And, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I want to be. No, no, but what I'm saying is, that's, that's the whole problem at the moment. Uh, yeah, that no, we cannot, uh, here, other than the fact that there is a mathematical formulation for explaining certain things, and for the other thing we don't have it. Uh, yeah, but I don't want to. I don't want to give the impression. Okay, maybe it's, it's no, your personal yeah. position, but my position is that I think we do have already strong enough arguments to say sure. No, that's no. not what yeah. I have. No, no. Of course, this is this is like a very arbitrary example. Yeah, sure, sure. You can uh, plan out a set series of experiments to prove it false. It's not like people haven't tried to find mm -hmm. such phenomena. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. People have tried very hard to confirm such you know, yeah. out of body experiences mm -hmm. and so on. It, mm -hmm. and, and so that was probably even a bad for example. It's not luck for but, lack of trying. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that. But but this is uh, this is how I'm trying to transition to. Mm -hmm. uh, this this uh, this concept of mind that we just don't grasp, but but I mm -hmm. took a very bad example. No, it's not it's not a bad example. It's, it's a, I think it's very illustrative in the sense mm -hmm. to make the the point I tried to make mm -hmm. before, which is yeah, there are things that we don't know, but I think we can say at least I feel personally, I don't want to mm -hmm. speak for you, that there are phenomena that I think you can dispose of them already with based on what we know. And mm -hmm. in this category, my fall, or not my, mm -hmm. I think these out-of-body experiences and you know, things of the sort, that's not coming up with a better, out. more reasonable example of things that we just cannot explain. Mm -hmm. But but there are certain moments, you know, with, with a, it's because of our own 
biases and stuff that we just cannot explain certain things. Uh, but 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 on the other hand, there's other point also that I want to make is reality is very, can be very non-intuitive. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when when we talk about us being materialists, uh, we are not talking about uh, intuition. And we're not talking about it because it, it, it comes across as well, an association that mm -hmm. I think people usually make with when if you would tell them, yeah, I'm a materialist, it's like they associate that with a very kind of boring and drab and dull view of the universe. Mm -hmm. And it's not the case at mm -hmm. all. It's just not not at all. You know that uh, I think there is, as Darwin would have put it, there is grandeur in this in this uh, way to see that to see life. It, if if you are firmly grounded in this materialist conception, there is plenty of room in that worldview to create the most outstanding phenomena. It's just uh, it's, it's it's not in a short supply to provide all sorts of incredible. They are happening all the time around us. Actually, it's it's not at all boring. It's not dull. It's not uh, it's not uh, out of fashion. <laughs> not no. at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, now just uh, just a quick question. Could you tell us an example? Maybe I, I mean, I'm just uh, probing here. Maybe there's nothing that you have in mind at the moment. You can come up with at this in this in this at this very moment. But is there? Could you give us an example of something that you believe again, lowercase b, that uh, we that. Or a notion that people have that is not yet proven, but but it as 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 of the, as, as of things that now it belongs to this kind of quasi esoteric uh, slash supernatural phenomena that you think might at a point at a certain point in the future get vindicated by science. Hmm. This is, I mean. The thing is, I, I don't want to just tell whatever crap because I don't have any evidence to back it up, right? Mm -hmm. So I cannot just... No, there's no judgment here. This might be debate. Debate can sue, but, but no judgment, let's say. Mm. In that regard, it's a safe space. And, uh, <laughs> and I mean, I, I, you, this, this phenomenon, I mean, I, I don't believe that... This is my firm belief. No matter how supernatural something or how magical something might appear, my belief is that you can always explain it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I, I'm going to give a very close example, like my, actually my two parents, they have had uh, what some people call, um, or call generally, like near-death experiences, mm -hmm. both of them in, in two different situations, of course, and, so yeah. No, no, in this, uh, two different situations, I was thinking it was the same. Yeah. No, 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 in different situations. Mm -hmm. Uh, and both describe the experience in a similar way, but um, but oh, I mean it, it, this this seems to be I mean it's somehow something weird because I think that everybody that describes the experiences have the same perception, right? I my I think that there is definitely an explanation for this. Is it the the more, I would say, typical account of the light at the end of the tunnel sort of thing? Uh, Something like that. Sort of like that. Well, I'm, if you no, want no, no, me, no. if you want me, I can, describe how they, I can describe how they told me that. Yeah, yeah you go ahead. But uh, it's going to take a while. But anyway, so, yeah, my, my, my dad told, actually, that so my, my, when my dad was 15, so he was basically almost drowning in a pool. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so because... I don't know what happened. He got some uh, cramps and whatever, and he was like, it was like one of his first times in a pool overall. And he went there, and then he started drowning, but no one paid attention. So because there was a big party, no one was paying attention, and then he was drowning, 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 and then at some that point, that makes it extra tragic. Yeah, and then at some point, someone noticed and sort of pulled him out right on time, not for him to die. But what he described, and he. What surprises me that we, we even spoke very recently, and he still, still has very vivid memories of all this. And he, he told that he was basically laying on a, on a very, uh, what he what, thought to be a very, like, like an infinite, infinite uh, black uh, 
iron table or whatever, like something black that is very, very infinite. He felt like just laying like this. And then he felt like some, there was some kind of press coming towards him. And then he, he saw a, a light, you know, like a, a very shiny light. And he started thinking about his family and everything, like as many people describe, right? So all these, these experiences. Mm. That must be a real thing. Like this thing about like, uh, there's like uh, scattered pieces of thoughts that keep yeah, coming to you yeah. at the last moment. I mean, like, uh, yeah, just really have gone with you. Uh, for my mom, it was actually much, uh, my, for my, mom, my mom's case, it's actually quite, quite interesting. I don't know again how to explain it because, uh, you know, like, I cannot be in my mom's yeah, body, yeah, right? Like, I, 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 yeah, I can just tell you what, what my mom uh, described. described. And so my mom, when she was also a, like a teenager or whatever, she got locked in, in a, a bathroom or whatever. But this bathroom was underneath some pool or whatever, and there was a chlorine gas leakage, actually. So she was trapped inside, and she sort of I mean, she passed out there. She doesn't know how, but apparently someone found her there inside. And, uh, and she doesn't know all of this. She knows because of uh, what they told her, right? Mm -hmm. But what she really remembers is that everything, like she was in the toilet, everything became uh, black. And then she clearly remembers that she was seeing herself, but from outside her body, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was in some kind of OP room and uh, there were some doctors that were trying to, you know, like revive her and like putting some electroshocks. And uh, then she was like, shit, you know, what the fuck am I doing here? And then at some point she felt like a very strong force pulling her towards her body again. And she came back to, to her body and then that's where she came back to life. So these two things, I, I still to, till, the day, till today, I sort of carry us two experiences that, let's say, somehow they are meaningful for me because they are close to me. But I cannot mm -hmm. really prove them or disprove them. But yeah, because well, they belong to a realm of subjective experiences that exactly. somebody else has. So first of all, I, I can understand the difficulties in describing the mm -hmm. experience of someone else in this mm -hmm. in these circumstances. But here's the thing: I, I also yeah go for it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I cannot recall now the the person or the experiments that have been done in that uh, in that realm. But they are there are. And, and turns out that all these uh, experiences of this, this typical account of the light and, and the tunnel and the darkness and, and so on, out of body experience that you kind of can see your, your own body as it's as is basically laying there lifeless, uh, have been connected to. And for me, let, me, let me just rewind a little bit. The fact that they did not die means that, that they still had cerebral activity to some degree. Right, if 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 your brain just uh, shuts down yeah. absolutely hundred percent, all every neuron ceases to, ceases to fire. There is no more synapses firing in any part of your brain. Then they're pretty much dead. You, you, there's no there's brain no bringing in, no, there's no bringing anyone back from that uh, mm -hmm. situation. So there is a, so you, 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 your starting point must be when you think about this kind of experience. I think uh, the recognition. Mm -hmm that brain activity is still happening, right? It's not, it's just not the parts that are the modules of the brain that are usually involved with your conscious experience when, when, when you're awake. So there is probably not activity in your prefrontal cortex or and your visual cortex and that, those parts, motor cortex and so on. But other parts are certainly active because otherwise you would just be really, really gone. And Here's the difficulty that I have now is that I don't remember the kind of experiments, but I'm pretty much I I I, I think you just have to, to search for that because it's it's there it's available uh, correlations between the particular parts of the brain that still remain active in that in those near death experiences mm -hmm. and the kind of perception subjective experiences that uh, because of the virtue of this of what these particular models of the brain do you're likely to experience, and there's a good match between the, 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 the mm -hmm. narratives of the people yeah. that experiences that, that kind of, a, uh, of situation, and what is expected, expected them to feel and to see, yeah. even the parts of the brain that are still active. So that's, yeah, I, mean, I, I just remember that 
when I was in secondary school, this is uh, it's kind you of junior, 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 junior high. high. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was in junior high, so I was like 13 years old or something. Uh, you have presentation time, and you were able to choose a topic, you know, to present to your to your classmates. And I chose that, you know, and I had this huge, you know, I was really reading these magazines that back in the day I thought were reputable. <laughs> you know, I, I there there's one magazine in in in, in the Spanish speaking world called Muy Interesante. Ah, okay. You know, like very interesting, it's very interesting. And uh, I thought for me back in the day those that was science. You know, anything that made it to that into that magazine was okay. This is mm -hmm. certified and approved by the scientific mm -hmm. community when I was 13 years old. Turns out it's not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, yes. Uh, Something you want to say. Yeah. No, I was just adding to it that uh, memories in general is a strange thing, right? Uh, like when people are recalling things, memories, I imagine, are something like simulations, uh, where you have certain set of perceptions stored in different forms. It could be the visual cortex, it could be some heat signals you're getting, some other form of interoceptive uh, thing that is happening inside you. And you formulate a picture for it. Uh, of course, I'm not trying to undermine the, 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 the profound experience that your parents had. Mm -hmm. uh, but my guess would be that a lot of the nuance and the color comes by uh, listening to others. Uh, and because every time you, you can change the, uh, the flavors and the colors in the memory. Mm -hmm. and, and you can make it richer and richer, richer and more detailed over time. So a lot of these profound experiences, like now if I recall a memory, which was a small thing, uh, like a kernel of something, mm -hmm. it has expanded into something very rich and part of it is very subjective. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as he said, maybe uh, different parts of the brain remaining active could lead to different elements mm -hmm. having a greater... And, and the reconstruction, the, the narrative reconstruction, exactly, when you mm -hmm. are recalling the memory, mm -hmm. you are bound to... Dismiss parts of, of the of the experience that probably were important, mm -hmm. and add parts to the experience. It's just uh, the way we are, we are wired. That's why first, like with the direct witness test, mm -hmm. uh, testimony, in 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 trials, it's you should always cast some reasonable level of doubt upon that because memories are not these. Uh, they are not engraved in stone in our brains. They are really open for. Re, rewriting. Yeah, we are we are changing them yeah. all the time. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so. There have been some experiments actually done on uh, how we change our memories to protect ourselves. Mm. For example, if we have a very traumatic experience, mm. your brain will change the memory yeah. slightly so that you don't suffer so mm. much when you're recalling it. To so self, self, no, and, and, self and, and I've seen myself very consciously do some things like that. Yeah. Like sometimes something you said or did, uh, like you just think about it and you find it disgusting. So you tweak it a bit, and then over time uh, you kind of see it becomes a easier to digest. Is that is that? I'm just wondering now, thinking out loud, that it, could that be a, an extreme case of, of 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 memory editing? Could that be what what's happening in the case of pathological liars? I, you know, I, like I people that just really lie, like yeah. they yeah. lie. They, 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 that you've been with them yeah. when when the event that they are telling you was was mm -hmm. to place, mm -hmm. and then they say that a couple of days later in front of you, mm -hmm. and with all the confidence in the world, they yeah. tell you something that just didn't happen. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. Not even yeah. close. <laughs> And, but you see that you don't see the slight, the slightest hesitation when they are. They are it's, it's, it's almost. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they. they who is they this are, who said that? You know, uh, a lie is very close to the truth, and very hard to detect. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, but but, but I, I I get the exact point you're saying because. Uh, I do. I, 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 I we do. all know people like that first. No, no, but but, but I, I see myself to be slightly in that direction as well. Like I, I'm not blatantly like, but often uh, I like telling stories in a funny way. So anything, uh, yeah. any incidents that happen to add more color to make it more rich, you add elements to it uh, which uh, mm -hmm. make it funnier. Yeah, but that there's a difference between. No, no, but what I'm saying is. Over time, you kind of don't remember where the, the initial yeah, scene the of that exact situation. Yeah, yeah but, you, uh, but but that might be a more uh, 
a more gradual. But even if you if you lose track of mm -hmm. the of the successive editings that you made and exactly how they occurred, mm -hmm. it's uh, that that's possible, eh, right? Mm -hmm. But you know that you've been editing yeah. the, the story conscious, to, to maximize yeah. to maximize the fun of it, right? I mean, no, but, but I almost you never, subconsciously. Yeah, but you, yeah, uh, but you never reach yeah. you never reach the moment of thinking. Uh, of, exactly of, of forgetting, of forgetting yeah. that you did these yeah. changes, yeah. you edited the, yeah. edited the whole thing to, mm. to, to, uh, to maximize the level, yeah. the level of entertainment. Yeah. Right. Actually, I just remembered. Uh, what was the point of uh, him telling us the story? Uh, I guess we wanted to go into I things that I, we could not explain. So no, I, want, I, I wanted to, to ask more or less, have an idea of something that, as as it, as, 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 as things stand, to stand, stand, stand yeah. now. Uh, it's it's yeah. part of, of the, it belongs to the real yeah. of uh, superstition, but that probably mm -hmm. you suspect or you kind of quasi predict mm -hmm. that at some point in the future it's going to be vindicated mm -hmm. by science fiction. Mm -hmm. And I think that falls within the category of things that have been pretty much almost mm -hmm. but completely. You see, I lack the data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's why it's an elaborate tangent of trying to explain what might have happened. That's why it's nice to discuss yeah. with you guys because I don't know all the things that so you yeah. can And I'm sorry that I forgot the. The exact source, but uh, I'm pretty confident. Yeah, yeah. Just, just have to Google yeah. it. But I, I think it's about time to put mind over matter. Mind over matter. Uh, and we could already start doing that in the very next episode. So you want to keep this... Uh, uh, wrap it up in a nice ribbon. Uh, okay. Yeah, because it's, uh, this opens, opens up a whole new kind of worms, no? Mm -hmm. we, we will... Just a, as a little bit of a, a taster. Habit, a taster. Yes. Is, uh, nice. We're going to talk about uh, where where does where does mind fits into into all of this? Mm. You you have this, this. You already kind of explained to us what your general worldview is regarding mm. the nature of reality, uh, the material world, what might be lurking outside the material world as we know as we know it uh, as of now, and where does the picture or or, or the notion of, of Mind and probably consciousness, which is very, very much mm. they are very much interrelated, fit into this uh, worldview that you got. So that's gonna be for the for the second part. Yeah, of this. I would uh, assume so. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, thank yeah. you for having me here yeah. as a guest. Uh, you're you're gonna be here. Actually, you're not leaving. <laughs> yeah. Um. Thanks, boys. Yes, in my Bye. <laughs> See you. <laughs> See you. Yeah. If you like what we do, please help us continue doing it simply by subscribing to our YouTube channel, following us on Twitter, liking us on Facebook, visiting our website tillthebottom.com, or spreading the voice. All the links are provided in the description. Thank you for listening, and until the next time.